Guys, I'm teaming up with my good friend, retired Navy SEAL Jocko Wilnick for something real special. Jocko started Jocko Fuel when he found out the supplements he was buying for himself and his family were filled with heavy metals and ingredients he was unaware of. He wanted a line of supplements and consumables that had all of the good, effective ingredients and none of the bad. So we made it happen. I got set up with all of the key products and we want to do the same for you. Jocko Go Energy Drinks for clean, sustainable energy. Jocko Milk Protein for 30 grams of delicious grass-fed protein, plus a full line of supplements to support mood, focus, hydration, joints, and more. Jocko Fuel Supplements are scientifically formulated and made with ingredients that are clinically tested. They are better for you options with no artificial flavors or sweeteners, no added sugar, and no gray area ingredients or banned substances. It's clean fuel without compromise. And right now, you can get 20% off when you use code CHAIL at jockofuel.com. Or if it's easier, just click on the link below. Styles make fights and MMA math doesn't work. Do you believe that? I know that you've heard it. Do you believe that? And allow me to condescend and back up and just tell you what MMA math means, okay? You've got three fighters. And we're gonna call them A, B, and C so we can sound like geometrists here. But A fights B and B fights C. A and C have not yet fought. But you can juxtapose and start to gather through the common opponents how that match would go. Now, when people love to say, you, you gotta have the fight, there's a reason we do the fight. What? Well, yes, no kidding. I don't make believe for you that if A and C don't fight, that we're just going to mail them a winner's check and or a belt or a trophy, but I'm also not gonna concede to you that it doesn't matter, that it's not helpful and useful. It is the greatest jumping off point that we have in this sport when we're trying to predict a fight. So I'm gonna be at a UFC in Miami and you can believe I will have my smart device out and I'm going to be paying attention to Francis Ngannou versus Joshua. And this is where the entire game of MMA math comes in. Francis has not blinked at boxing the top guys. In fact, he went out there and he fought Tyson Fury with very limited preparation. I mean, from what I'm told, he's, he's got a bum knee. He, come, he comes off a bum knee and goes right into boxing. So at what point that knee was good enough to get your road work in and get your jump ropes in and get that ring and move around? I don't actually know, but it was only a matter of months. And he walked into the hardest fight on earth. He walked in against the biggest, the longest, the most durable, and the reigning heavyweight champion. Now, I bring that to you because I can't do fighter math for Francis versus Joshua. I can't do it because Joshua did not get in there with Fury, though he had the opportunity, though he was licensed, though he was offered, though he was in the weight class. I want you to sit, I want you to let that sink in for a second. When you tell me that, that competitive math doesn't work, look, I know it can only get me so far, but you're gonna have a hard time when I tell you right back that attitude matters, that will matters, that want, how bad does he want it? You guys hear that question all the time. How bad does he want it? Well, Francis wanted it bad enough to do it on one leg. Francis wanted it bad enough to do it at 11 in the afternoon in a different continent with possibly nobody watching. Francis wanted it bad enough to do all the things that I just stated and hiss off the UFC of which he was contracted to at the time. Can we at least give Francis that he really wanted it? Can we at least give him that? Would it be reasonable for us to say that he wanted the fight with Fury more than Joshua wanted with Fury? I know we're going to have an argument back and forth there, but is that a reasonable statement? Because if you go to do this on paper, you go to break down Francis Ngannou versus Anthony Joshua, you do that on paper, you're going to look at Francis, you're going to have a, a great big O in the win column. How many times in your life has the promoter, the Don King, the Eddie Hearn, the Dana White, if you will, promoted a guy because he's got a great big O and maybe he's taking another guy with an O and somebody O has got to go because they're both undefeated. The guy I'm here talking to you about has got that great big O in the win column. How do you promote that? Well, obviously, 
if you've been following long, there's one hell of a story here. Could Francis be in this position without Tyson Fury? I don't think so. There was something about Fury, specifically, that respected MMA. And MMA and the community, you guys, are not nice to all boxers. You haven't been nice to Jake Paul. You have not been overly welcoming to Canelo. You were very nice and very opening and welcoming to Tyson Fury. And I believe it's because he went first. I believe it's because Fury said wonderful things about MMA, said he would like to do MMA, teamed up with Darren Till. I think they trained together for a week, but we got that footage of him sprawling and throwing kicks, showing that he had a sincerity towards our sport. I think that was the big olive branch. And I think that's why so many of you are open to Fury. Now, I got to remind you, when Fury and Ngannou were talking about fighting, I mean, they had every crazy idea in the world. Mike Tyson was going to be the referee. They were going to do it in a cage. They were going to do it in Atlant Stadium in Las Vegas. They were going to box, but it was going to be in four-ounce gloves. They were going to change the rules, make it more of the Queens Bear, make it more like Dave Feldman does with the bare knuckle boxing where you could grab guys and you could fight out of a clinch. I mean, all of these things were discussed. In each and every one of those discussions, not one of them came to fruition because not one of those ideas was good. It was terrible. You guys either have to box or don't. Somebody has to put it on the line. And in this case, it won't be Francis. Francis is going to go out and take an ass whipping, but he's not putting anything for risk. Fury gets to have an easy day at the office, but he's risking everything. That's the story. And if you try to take that from us, if you two get together and try to take that from us, we're not going to support the fight. These were the stakes when we're going into this. Fury pulls off for my lifetime. And for my life's experience, the most surprising sporting moment I've ever witnessed. And when I say my lifetime, being 46 years young, I don't just mean the last 46 years. I mean, in my lifetime, I've never seen this. I've seen videos and tapes. I go back to the day of Babe Bruce standing on the, on the mound and he's going to hit the ball somewhere. I've never seen anything like this that struck me as more of a surprise. How competitive Angano was. And when you have guys that overperform or they give the perception that they've overperformed, you will quickly find out who the bullies are. Because the bully is the guy is going to go and try to get that fight with a guy that's got some shine. But the bully wasn't willing to fight him the day before. The bully had never asked for the fight. The bully didn't even call out the winner of the fight. He called the guy that lost for the fight. But the guy's got shine because he, the bully thinks that he performed better than he actually is. And I'm going to take all that shine, I'm going to rub him out. We quickly found out why Fury versus Joshua never happened. I mean, it's right there. Fury versus Joshua has been argued about, well, Fury wouldn't do it, or Joshua wouldn't do it. No, no, we now know. There's, there's no more wondering. The moment that Francis overperformed against Fury and Joshua jumped out of his seat saying, please put me in there with the guy who just lost, we now know who was blinking and who was the skunk at the garden party for that. Now, which way are you going to go? Because it appears to be glaringly obvious. Francis Ngano was one half of the most surprising sporting event I've ever seen. And he didn't even win, by the way. But one of the judges said he did. It was a split decision. A lot of onlookers said he did. Teddy Atlas, whose opinion I respect the most, said he did not. But Teddy Atlas went back and watched it three times until he came public with that conclusion. So can we at least agree? If Teddy Atlas had to watch something, rewatch something, and watch it a third time before he was confident in giving you his opinion, can we at least agree? This must have been a pretty good performance. And one thing about Fury is he's a fighter. I can't take that from him. I can't say that he's smart. I can't tell you he's eloquent. A lot of those big heavyweights, you bring them over, take one look at them, say, man, you could be a tight end on any NFL team. 
You could be a starting center for the Los Angeles Lakers. It's not like that with Fury. That is not the most athletic guy that I've seen, but boy, is he a fighter. He can move. He'll carry that weight around. He won't quit. I don't know that I can give those same compliments to Joshua. I feel as though Joshua could go make a run in the NFL, could turn some heads within the NBA. I feel that he's got a great body. He's got great DNA. I feel like he's got great athleticism. I don't know that I've ever found that he digs deep when he needs to. Francis Ngannou to win the Fury fight, at least on the judges' scorecards that said he did win the Fury fight, had to dig deep. Can we agree? Francis Ngannou, to maintain his heavyweight championship, his last fight in mixed martial arts, had to dig deep and come back against Surreal Ghan. He actually had to turn to wrestling, which we'd never seen him use before or since. Can we agree? Francis Ngannou wants to be here, and it's not about the money, or at least not alone with the money, because he never blinked. He called for the top guys. He said, any one of you. And all of a sudden, they start falling to the line. Okay, I'll go first, which means I'll go second. But his stance never changed. Joshua has done everything in the world. Feel free to disagree with me. I'm sure that you will. But he did everything in the world to not fight Tyson. Oh, by the way, he never did fight Tyson. So whether it was courage or politics or better at the game that you grew up in, either way, Francis beat him in my opinion. But did Francis overperform against Tyson? I can't with good faith tell you he did not. I could not gather enough about Francis in those 30 minutes to tell you that he did not overperform, to tell you that he is not in fact that good, to tell you that Tyson didn't take him serious enough wasn't prepared enough, which are elements that Joshua will be able to correct. Just don't know enough about a guy in 30 minutes. But I feel very confident in telling you, you can't count him out. I feel very confident in telling you this is all of a sudden his home court. I was in Saudi Arabia a week ago. Francis walks into a fight. You should have seen it. You should have seen the swarms of people coming around. He has made this home. And in my opinion, he has a lesser fight than the one that one judge already says he won. I find Joshua to be a lesser fight than Fury.